Today, I'm going to explain a family adventure movie called The Astronaut Farmer. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. The movie opens up with an introduction to our protagonist, Charles Farmer, a middle-aged man living in Texas. His family consists of his wife Audrey, their teenage son Shepard, and their two little daughters. Charles is a former U.S. Air Force fighter pilot and astronaut in training who reluctantly left the space program before he could fulfill his dream of becoming a part of NASA. He did this to take over his family's failing ranch after his troubled father unalived himself. Despite being busy running the ranch, Charles hasn't given up on his dream dreams of becoming an astronaut. As a result, he has invested every penny he earned to build a rocket in his barn, hoping to travel to space someday, or perhaps to accidentally unalive his whole family. In the next scene, we see Audrey arriving at a diner where she works as a waitress. There, some of the town residents joke about her husband and his unrealistic dream of launching a rocket. This makes her feel very bad, but she ignores them and focuses on her work, which undoubtedly earns her $5 an hour, which goes straight towards that stupid rocket. In the meantime, Charles meets with a man he found online to discuss purchasing fuel. He mentions that his rocket is nearly complete and that all he needs is 10,000 pounds of fuel. This shocks the man who explains that obtaining such a large amount of fuel is very difficult and will cost a significant amount of money. Following this, Charles goes to meet his friend Arnold, who works as a loan officer at the bank. He requests a loan for his project, but Arnold reminds him that he is already in significant debt. He advises his friend to abandon his unrealistic dream, warning that if he doesn't pay his debts on time, the bank will seize his ranch soon. Charles is disappointed to hear this and leaves without saying anything. His schizophrenia hasn't let him down yet and he's sure as hell not gonna let it let him down now. Later, at home, the family sits down for dinner and plays a game in which they say what they will bring if they go to the moon. They then pray together and discuss Charles's plans for traveling in space. It becomes clear that even though everyone is against him, his family believes in him and is extremely supportive. The following day, Audrey's father arrives at the house for a rare visit. When Charles shows him the rocket, he admires the work and supports him. Just then, Charles receives a letter informing him that he has a month to pay his debt or lose his house and ranch. This enrages him so much that he immediately rushes to the bank and throws a brick at Arnold's office. The situation soon escalates and the two get into a heated argument, prompting the cop to intervene. Afterward, the town judge settles the dispute between the two men and Charles has to apologize for his behavior. He is also required to undergo a psychiatric evaluation for his violent outburst. He later goes to see Beth, who is the town's only psychiatrist. However, Charles doesn't take the session seriously and reminisces about their high school prom when he asked her if she wanted to go to the moon. Beth dismisses it as childish talk, but Charles insists that he is serious about going to the moon and ends the session. Following this, he fetches Shepard from his classroom, stating that he needs an engineer for his project. The teacher mentions that they are studying history, but Charles asserts that he will teach his son how to make history. He then picks up his daughter as well and they all head to the barn. Charles informs his children that they are part of his project and that they will finish and launch the rocket within a month. He explains that they won't have to attend school, but will study at home to keep up with their education. The kids are riled up by his big talk and immediately agree. The only one who's against the plan is Audrey, but Charles convinces her, assuring her that it's only for a month. Soon, word spreads throughout town that Charles intends to purchase 10,000 pounds of fuel. The FBI also learns of this and sends two agents to interrogate him. They soon arrive at the barn to investigate what Charles is up to. The agents are amazed by his invention, but warn him that civilians are not permitted to launch rockets and the government won't allow it. However, our hero is unwilling to give up and meets with his lawyer friend, Kevin. He explains that he submitted the FAA application six months ago, including the entire plan and illustrations, but they did not intervene until now. Kevin then speculates that perhaps back then they didn't believe Charles would actually follow through with it. In the following days, Charles's popularity begins to grow and many townspeople start supporting him. He becomes the subject of newspaper headlines and television news. His home is swarmed with reporters and curious members of the public interested in his project. Meanwhile, the two FBI agents stand guard outside the barn 24-7 to ensure he doesn't launch the rocket. One day, the family is visited by a man named Colonel Doug 
who is Charles's old friend and an astronaut. He supports Charles's dreams and tells the family about his experiences in space. After dinner, Charles takes him to the barn to show him the rocket that he built. Doug is deeply impressed by his determination and hard work. However, he gives Charles a reality check, saying that the authorities will never allow him to fly this rocket. He asks his friend to give up and promises to get him a job at NASA so that he can travel to space the right way. You may be delusional, Charles, and scaring everyone, but we can get you into NASA. Come on now. Upon hearing this, Charles is somewhat disappointed, as he had expected Doug of all people to understand. He politely declines the offer, insisting that he wants to go to space in his own rocket. Days later, Charles and Kevin meet with the US government officials from the FAA, FBI, CIA, NASA, and the Department of Defense. Doug is also present among the officials. The government guys make it clear that they cannot allow Charles to launch the rocket because it could be classified as a weapon of mass destruction. They are even more concerned when they learn that his 15-year-old son, Shepard, has been designated as the mission leader. To make matters worse, Doug implies that Charles is mentally unstable, pointing out that his father committed the unthinkable after going crazy. Hearing this, Charles expresses his frustration about how the Americans act like space belongs solely to the government. He states that he was taught to believe in limitless possibilities, and that somewhere along the way, people lost faith in those ideals. If I want to blow up my family in half the fucking town, I should be allowed to do it. I'm a free man. He also mentions that he and his son have been working together since Shepard was a child. Charles claims that his son is just as knowledgeable as him and is fully capable of carrying out this mission. Hearing his speech, the officials are unimpressed and state that they will inform him once a decision has been made. Later, while Charles is in the bathroom, the head of the FAA approaches him and firmly states that the government will never permit him to launch his rocket. He warns Charles that if he attempts to proceed, the military will shoot him dead in seconds. Our hero is certainly shaken by the threat, but Kevin reassures him that the man was just bluffing and they can't just kill him like that. <laughs> Yeah, they can. In the next scene, Audrey is at the supermarket when her card unexpectedly gets declined. She gets worried and goes to the bank, only to discover that all their financial assets are frozen. That's not all. She also learns that their house and ranch are about to be seized. This makes her feel betrayed, as she never thought Charles would hide such important information from her. He seemed totally rational right up until this very moment. In the evening, the family is having dinner together when Audrey suddenly bursts out and confronts Charles about his Deception. She accuses him of jeopardizing their future for his selfish dreams and demands to know what they will eat and where they will live if his plan fails. But instead of responding like a sensible man, Charles becomes angry too and starts throwing food in the kitchen. This escalates into a heated argument, causing the children to become scared and run to their rooms. Days later, the family receives another shock when Audrey's father quietly passes away in his sleep. They mourn his death and hold a small funeral to honor him. One evening, Charles sees a man in his barn who is counting his cattle and trying to measure his land. He asks the man what he's doing there, and the latter responds that he's appraising his land for the bank. Realizing that time is running out, Charles comes up with the idea to create his own fuel by mixing kerosene with hydrazine. He asks Shepard to reset the rocket engine so it can run on his new fuel mixture. That evening, Charles tells Audrey about how his father was on the verge of losing the ranch. Before the officials could take it away from him, he committed the unthinkable. Charles promises that he's not going to end up like like his father and won't give up on his dream. So you're gonna make more money? <laughs> no, I'm gonna launch this goddamn rocket. The next morning, when Audrey wakes up, she finds a letter from Charles, which appears to be a goodbye note. Before she can even process this, a huge blast occurs outside, revealing that the rocket is about to launch. A huge crowd is also gathered to observe this spectacle. Charles then begins to ignite the rocket, despite not having the optimal substitute fuel. However, after ascending only a few feet, the rocket rocket descends back down. He falls over and the rocket skids horizontally, causing a huge explosion. In the aftermath of this incident, Charles is rushed to the hospital. Although he manages to survive, he is in very bad condition and will take a long time to recover. When he wakes up, he feels terrible about what he did, but Audrey doesn't scold him and is simply relieved that he's alive. The scene then shifts to months later, where Charles is gradually recovering, but depressed over the project's failure. He has now completely abandoned his dream 
name as he doesn't want his family to suffer again. Meanwhile, Audrey meets with her lawyer, who reveals that her dad has left her an inheritance, including a trust fund for the three children and a substantial amount of assets. She then decides to sell everything to repay their debt. In the following scene, Audrey meets with Arnold for the paperwork, and he tells her that she did the right thing. He then starts laughing at Charles for having such silly dreams and endangering his family. Arnold asserts that Charles was never going to achieve his dreams. His harsh words upset Audrey deeply, but she chooses to remain silent. Later, Audrey meets with Charles and gives him all the remaining money she got from the inheritance. Filled with emotion, she explains that the rocket is a part of their family, and that all of their children grew up sharing their father's dreams. Audrey claims that without the rocket, they're just another dysfunctional family. But with the rocket, they're a dysfunctional family led by a psychopath. So, she urges him to build a new one. This gives Charles the much-needed confidence he had lost, and he's immediately on board with the plan. Starting from the next day, the family begins building another rocket in private. Charles also trains himself to survive in space, and goes through several medical tests during this time. After a few months, they finally complete building the rocket, and Charles names it the Dreamer. Soon, the day of the launch arrives, but the FBI agents are still stationed outside the barn. They receive an alert that Charles is purchasing fuel again, and rush to intercept him. They tail his car with police forces and eventually manage to corner him on a road. However, it turns out to be bait, as they apprehend another man instead of Charles. Back in the barn, Charles successfully launches the rocket, while Shepard stays in the control room to give signals. The rocket lifts off, and the town residents watch in amazement as it ascends into the sky. Charles soon reaches space, where he witnesses the breathtaking scenery and sheds tears of joy. Meanwhile, the FAA's head holds a press conference and denies that the rocket launch took place. He dismisses it as a rumor, claiming that Charles is comfortably sitting at home. Back in space, the rocket's lights suddenly go out, and Charles loses all communication signals. This worries Shepard and Audrey a lot, and they desperately try to reconnect with him. Shepard informs his mother that if they are unable to reach him, he'll orbit around space and eventually run out of oxygen. Oxygen. While waiting for his father to contact them, he soon falls asleep in the control room. The following morning, Charles notices his ring floating in space. While attempting to catch it, he discovers the disconnected cables and repairs them. This enables him to re-establish communication and speak with his family. After orbiting the Earth nine times, Charles finally prepares to return home. He sets the coordinates and safely lands a few miles away from his home, where his family picks him up. In the final scene, Charles is hailed as a hero by people across the country for his remarkable achievement. The movie concludes as he appears on a popular late night talk show for an interview, while FBI agents watch from the audience and applaud him. The moral of this story is that you should support your family, even if they plan to bankrupt you and kill half the town.